Hello, my Virgo friends, uh, this, and I'm about to set forward into a free-form style of reading. Uh, it's something I really enjoy doing. I do it in the extended quite a bit, um, but I'm bringing it forward into the general readings now. We're going to look forward into the next seven days or so, into, into maybe the next seven to ten days or the next couple of weeks, knowing that we're all kind of moving at different speeds, depending on what our natal chart is. Um, if we have more earth in our chart, then we move slower. If we have fire, then we can move faster and so forth. So um, let's go ahead and um, just dig into this. Uh, just give me a second as I kind of get into your energy now, Virgo. All right, let's see what we have here, my friends. And then we're going to... Yeah, three of, oh, that's a beautiful card. Well, okay, here we, here's what we have to start with. This is what we're being given to start with. We have the three of swords in reverse. Beautiful. I mean, if we're going to have the three of swords, we want it to be in the reverse, right? We have the wheel of fortune, an exciting, great energy of movement forward. We have the empress here, and we know the empress came in like this. So, um, we know there's a little bit of, um, stabilization that's happening here and then we have the seven of pentacles this working energy this investing energy so let's get it, get into this i'm going to summarize it first and then we'll just dig in and and see what we can pull out of this information for you <clears throat> with the three of with the three of swords uh this is an energy now of <sighs> allowing the pain to move away from you allowing it to move away from you. You could be intentionally moving through pain um, and, and anxiety. Uh, it's important, when I, when I get into this energy, there is a feeling now of understanding, having, a, having a, a more complete understanding of how to process pain and heartbreak and anxiety, how to process it. Um, <clears throat> There is a way that that's effective and it doesn't have to be the only way, I suppose. What's coming forward here is um, it's important in this way of processing it to be able to determine what it is. So first of all, we have to acknowledge that there's pain there. We have to kind of dig in and, and sometimes we do this late at night or when it's really quiet, we can really ask yourself some, you know, hard questions like, why am I sad? Why am I upset? And then you kind of dig into that, dig down deep, almost with a shovel. Um, it's almost like a treasure hunt where you have to kind of find that nugget of what's truly causing the pain. And then you have to kind of fish that out. You kind of have to pull that up with a thread, pull that up out of there and live in that energy. So you, so it's like you have to feel that again. And when you feel it, it could cause you to cry. It could cause you to get angry. It could cause you to feel um, short moments of just a diminished feeling. Um, what's important about feeling it again is to find understanding about it. So it's not just in the feeling of it. It's in the acceptance that it happened. Um, trying to find a, the silver lining, any kind of... Um, acceptance about this, the silver lining of it, any kind of blessings that you might have received from it or um, something that might you might have gained from it. So it's always helpful to kind of, um, and this is why sometimes it, it, it happens afterwards when after you've had some time um, to, to move away from the experience. Sometimes healing comes after you've moved, moved away from the experience. For, for some of us can be healing from situations that happened years ago, you know, so it, it just depends on what the situation is. But when we do this, we feel it, we accept it, we come to terms with it, with it, and we release it from the energetic body, which is um, something we can do. We can write it. We can write about it on a piece of paper. We don't have to send that paper to anyone. We can even throw that paper away or burn it if we want to, but we express it from ourselves, either in tears in anger, and, and hopefully you're taking that anger out in a way that's not destructive towards yourself or anyone. That could be an exercise or kickboxing or whatever you do to express the anger. Maybe just going in, into a quiet place and saying things that, that come to you. Just it, It's important to get that energy out of you. That's the point of it. The point of it is not really in feeling it. 
but it's the feeling of it kind of gathers the energy around the feeling. If you don't feel it, you're, you might not be getting all of it, right? Just like doctors go into the body in surgery and try to gather up, you know, something in the body that's foreign to the body that's not good for it. They'll go and they try to gather it all up and take it out of there. Um, you're kind of doing that with energy when you're in a healing place. You're um, by feeling it, you're kind of pulling it all up into the feeling and then you accept it and you um, become okay with it in some way or another. And then you express it from the energetic body by crying, being angry, writing it, exercising it out. Um, whatever you do to feel better after that, the catharsis of that, that's how healing comes. And, it, and it, it, and, you know, in, in my past and, and I've always said, well, how, you know, I would, I would, you know, maybe have a reading done or I would go and talk to someone and they would say, oh, you know, you need to heal. Well, I always ask myself, how do I heal? And people always say, oh, you need to heal or there, this will be a healing period of time. But how is it actually done? And this is a process that I have found and I have been led through by my team um, that has really helped me. Um, I've even just done this recently. Um, I went through a, a great transformation in my life just for the last couple of months where I've been going through this major transformation where I even disappeared from this channel for some period of time um, because I was not able to do this work because I was going through a healing process. And that's exactly what I did. And look at me now. I'm back. I'm stronger. I'm loving my work. I'm doing it in a way that really allows me to express my creativity. And I really can feel the flow and everything is much stronger now. So those of you that have heard me um, maybe two months ago and you hear me now, there is a difference in the way I'm sounding, in the way I feel about my work. And that's because I use this this strategy. Now there are other strategies that we can use, but this one was helpful for me and I, and the words are flowing through about this. So this was obviously meant to be, to be brought forward, but there is some sort of healing now that's, that's allowing um, the old restrictions and the old heaviness to be lifted from you. Um, maybe even from, from certain chakras, maybe from the womb chakra or the throat chakra or whatever, wherever that energy has accumulated with you within you. So as we do that, we can really start to create momentum in our lives, whether we see it within us internally, or we see it in the exterior world. I do see that things are moving forward for you now. Um, there, there is momentum here. There, there are things happening and there could even be a group of people around you. It doesn't have to just be a solitary experience. Although for some of you, it is right? Because you can do it solitary experiences better than anyone, because that's how you find enlightenment. And there is, you know, and that's something what I've been doing too recently in the, in the last few months is, is being in the hermit energy, right? And so the hermit energy, the Virgo energy is, is something that you do so well. So naturally we can learn from how you do this. This creates new experiences to come in. It allows you to move forward. If you're able to dig into this herd and this pain and these restrictions that you've had, and you're able to heal from them with this ability to dig deep and to be, and to be compassionate towards yourself, it really creates new movements. And we see things beginning to happen now in the next short period of time. We do have an Empress energy here. We'll dig deeper into this, uh, into this Empress energy to see what she has to say and to see how she feels. Um, but this is really building in that maternal energy within you. Um, whether you are a man or a woman, um, we all have the maternal energy. We all have the feminine energy and we all have the masculine energy within us. Uh, this is building in that maternal energy within us, um, emboldening the feminine, um, nourishing the feminine, allowing passion to come into the feminine and for the feminine to find clarity in her, her own journey. All of these energies, clarity, passion, love, and vitality. Uh, I, passion and vitality. Okay. I'm going to go. I, why am I questioning what I'm saying? And, and even a groundedness, a stability, thank you, that comes forward in the emboldening and in the, um, enlivening of the feminine energy creates a very strong uh, willingness and capacity to step into situations um, with vigor uh, that we might have withheld from ourselves in the past. So I really see you stepping into um, a, a role in your life that is um, much more of what source energy would see you as, right? 
how your spiritual team sees you as the potential of who you are. You're stepping farther in that potential as you move forward is what's coming forward here. Um, there is something here that you're working on with the seven of pentacles. It's something that you have put a lot of time into. It's something that you could have put money into or you could have worked hard for. Uh, there's still a little bit of a waiting energy with the seven of pentacles. Um, but remember it's a seven. So you're, you're quite high in the progress of this. Um, it's just going to take a little bit more time. And I think you're willing to put the work in. This is the energy of whistle while you work. Um, it, it's an energy of understanding that the investments that we put towards, um, towards our, um, Our, our, our worldly possessions and our um, endeavors that will create abundance in our lives and create comfort in our lives, that this effort, this time, this work that we put into that um, is important for us to find completeness within. So um, it, it's, it's something that you know is going to bring in some stabilizing energy for you, which is um, maybe uh, an increase in revenue. Maybe it's um, something that you're working on to uh, maintain or care for your home or for your property or for your real estate. Um, maybe it is something that you're working on to, um, to, to advance your career. So this could also be training and schooling. Um, whatever it is, it's going to bring in um, a an additional level of stability, an additional level of resources that will bring um, a, a further comfort to you. So it is living in the 3D, Virgo, which is something that you do find to be quite important for you. And let's be real, it is very important to um, feel comfortable and secure in what we own where we rest our head at night, how we feel about our money, how we feel about the resources that are around us is important. And it's one of the aspects of life that you have um, with the time and the place that you were born, you have deemed to be an important experience in your, in your journey um, at this point in time or in, in this lifetime that you have. So I, I think all of these energies signify um, a, a strengthening from within um, a, a nourishment that you are experiencing in your own internal self and the way that you begin to nourish the people and the living beings that are around you. Remember, the Empress is not bothered by, by competition. She embraces other feminine energies. She, she, it's a maternal energy. It's an embracing of all that is. So there is a stepping forward into a more abundant way of thinking about um, that which could have intimidated intimidated us before. It's it's for example when we were younger as feminine energies and men can be in this energy as well and we know that they are in this energy sometimes where if we feel like we might not be fitting mainstream beauty, right? We might not be fitting into that. Maybe we're too, maybe we feel somehow that we don't have um, something about us that are of mainstream beautification. So maybe we're shorter than the normal person, or maybe we're heavier than the normal person. Um, or maybe we have a, um, a blemish on her face that is, is not, does not fit in uh, with with normal beautiful standards and there is a person in the room another feminine energy in the room who is beautiful who fits all the mainstream who who somehow can trigger us to feel a lack therein or to feel insecure about ourselves and when we were younger we might have been intimidated by this we might have uh, diminished ourselves or or held back then and stayed in the corner and thought oh, we're we're not good enough to to step forward and and and, and communicate or, or be we don't really fit into the category of being the life of the party because there is someone here who um, has a, a has a standard um, that is higher than ours right from from when we were younger this empress is an energy of knowing who you are knowing what your value is and what your beauty is and when you see someone else who has a different 
look than you or is different than you. There is an inclusive energy. There is a, oh, look at that beautiful person. I am going to go and say hi. And I would love to uh, speak to that person and get to know that person. And I feel like we could have some really um, interesting commonalities in our experiences. And there is not an intimidation power factor. There is an inclusivity. There is a desire to communicate and to be friends and to connect, right? It's the, it's uh it's almost in a correction of the feminine unhealthiness that that we have been in as a feminine energy. So it's 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 um it's, it's in a way it's it's correcting the harm and the the harm that feminine energies can inflict upon each other when there is um, a feeling of insecurity with it. So this is a very strong energy. It's a beautiful energy. It will bring people to you. It will draw people to you when you're in this type of energy. Um, I think this healing that you're going through could definitely have an impact on this Empress. So let's go ahead and dig deeper now. Um, I, I want to dig into the Wheel of Fortune. Let's see what's here. So let's, what we should do now is I'm going to take these energies and put them off to the side. Okay, so I'm going to put these off to the side. And let's dig into one at a time and see what we have here. Tell us more about this Wheel of Fortune now. Tell us more about this Wheel of Fortune. Knight of Wands. Woo! Knight of Wands energy. Passionate movement. Passionate movement ahead. Excitement. Enthusiasm. It could be spontaneity. It could be just spontaneous decisions. Remember, the Knight of Wands is just like, let's go. Let's do it. That is a great idea. Let's go. Ah, you know, <laughs> it's like a very youthful energy. It's very passionate. I like that the Page of Pentacles is next to it. I mean, it could be a romance starting here. It doesn't have to be. For many of you, it's not. It could be a new idea. It could be a new hobby. It could be a new project that's maybe a, somebody has a new idea at work, a new process or a, a new way of doing something. Or maybe they come with a new Excel chart or, or something or a new piece of software. And it's like, that is the answer. That is what we've been working. How did you find that? Let's go. Rah! You know, that kind of an energy. Sorry. I, I know I'm getting excited here. For a <laughs> I'll calm down. I'll calm down. See what happens to me when the Wheel of Fortune and the Knight of Wands are next to each other? Now, you might be in that energy. See, the Nine of Cups. I'm not kidding about this energy. There's something here that's super exciting for you. Super exciting. And you know why it's exciting, Virgo? Because it has this, it, it's a reasonable, it's a reasonable adventure. It's something that's reasonable. <laughs> it's something that's doable. It's something that has something tangible to it already. Whatever it is, it's something that you can see that could really be something. It's not an illusion. It's not a fantasy. And it's exciting. It's passionate. It's a dream come true, Virgo. Nine of Cups. Damn, now we have to go into these energies. All right, this is what Freeform is. Let's go deeper. Tell me more about this Knight of Wands. Tell me more. Tell me more about this Knight of Wands. Tell me more. If we do, if we use too many cards, I'll move to a new deck. So don't worry about that. Well, look at that. Look at that. Knight of Wands. See if anything else wants to come out here. All right. All right. This is what I mean. Knight of Pentacles. That's exactly what I mean. It's something that is reasonable. It's something that's going to bring in possibly, because remember, this is a wheel of fortune. So we're still at the, we're still at the beginning of this process. So, you know, I mean, but it's something that it's doable. It's something that you can really see happening. 
It's something for once, Virgo, that you can get on the bandwagon of. I mean, there's a lot of things that people do that's just sometimes kind of ridiculous. You know, you, they come up with an idea and they want you to participate. And it's like, you know, that it's just one of these things that's going to be gone in a month. And, um, it's, it, you're going to be, you're going to be involved in this and you're going to be all caught up in it. And then it's just going to kind of wither away. Right. This is not because that's what the Knight of wands can do. Right. That excitement, that passion, it can be something that comes in quite spontaneously, quite passionately, so excited. And then in a month, it's kind of like, kind of fizzles away, right? I know that that sound was not the right sound, but I'm not good at sound. So, but this is something with the page of Pentacles and the Knight of Pentacles that you can really see being something, being successful, maybe being easy to do. Maybe it's a relationship that's coming in that's like, why have I not thought of this person before? Or a, a job that has come towards you that has been around you this whole time. And you're like, why have I not considered this position before? Or a business, right? That That is coming forward to you or that you're connecting in with, that you're having an idea of, that you're like, of course I could do this business. I have always had this skill. This is super exciting. Here's somebody, you know, maybe there's a, there's someone else here that's, that's on this journey with you. And, and maybe you're saying, well, here is someone else who also has a skill that would complement it. Like, let's do it. It totally makes sense. Here's the high priestess energy. And now the knave of, the knave of wands, a page of wands. Now, this knight of wands could very well be this high priestess energy because it's next to the page of wands. Or you could be the high priestess energy. You know, I'm almost wondering if these energies are switched. If this person that's coming towards you with this idea or this idea could have this energy around it. If you're in a solo kind of experience, just put all these energies towards yourself and it will make sense as well. But if this is another person that's around you with this idea or ready to go on this journey with you or approaching you with something, this person could be in a very, could, could be very excited, but have something very real to show you. Like you can't deny that it is something that is of value and something that will work. And here you are with this very Virgo type energy, seeing how reasonable it is. Here you are, the high priestess in this position of enthusiasm, where this person would normally be this like, rah, rah, this person is excited, but still in this very earthy practical practicality energy. Here you are with this excitement that feels foreign to you, or this enthusiasm of like a can do, like, you know what? I don't even have to think very hard about this. I don't even have to do all those reports. I don't even have to um, go talk to whatever. I, I I know that this feels that this feels right, and this could be this could be quite successful, right? It's a knowing here with a high priestess, right? It's not like you have to go consult a bunch of people, or you have to go even connect in with your higher power. Um, it's like something that you know within you, innately within you that it's something that it could really be a significant life choice for you. And I think it's causing you to feel, it's, it's causing you to stand up, put on that outfit that you haven't had on for a long time because you haven't felt like you could um, live within that outfit, put on that red dress or that, you know, whatever it is and stand up and say, I'm doing this. This is me. This is my chance. This is it. This feels right. You know, it's something like that with this wheel of fortune. Here you are. Look at you here. This is you. Excited, feeling youthful, feeling passionate, knowing deep within you that there's something of tangibility here, something real here for you. And here you are moving forward or are knowing the stability of what this can be. You're a willing participant in this. And we have the nine of cups. All right. I have to go into the nine of cups. We're going deeper. Let's go into the nine of cups now. Nine of cups energy. Wishes coming true. Let's see what we can find. 
Let's see what we can find. Page of page of cups. Damn. I mean, how many pages? Do we have all the pages now? Page of swords. There's the rest. Hanged man. <laughs> okay, let's see what else comes out. Eight of cups. See, the wheel of fortune. Oh, five. Okay, here's the deal with the wheel of fortune. What happens with the wheel of fortune? What happens when the wheel turns? It leaves a trail behind it, doesn't it? It leaves a trail. It leaves a mark in the in the earth. And in order for you to move forward with this, with this dream come true, there's new, ins first of all, let's talk about this. Page of cups here. There's new inspiration here. There could be new love. There could be something that just refreshes your energy. It refreshes who you are. It livens your soul, right? It, it helps, it, it brings you back to life again, right? There, there's an emotional center that's, that's, that, that it's like the fairy dust has, has landed on your heart and it's inspired you, right? Page of Cups. This could be a new introduction of someone. This could be just a heart that, that knows that it is being led by an energy that is of higher quality, whether it's of the, from the universe, from your, um, higher, the higher power that you connect in with. It's something that's significant for you and it livens your spirit up with the Page of Cups. Now, here's the deal. This wheel is going to turn and it's going to leave a trail behind it. That's what happens when the wheel turns, right? That's what happens. Unless it's spinning in the air and when it spins in the air, then it's not grounded. So we want it to leave a trail. That's part of how things move forward. So there's going to be a trail that's left. And now how are, uh, how is this trail going to be created? It, it does look like there is, um, there is something here. It's going to take you just a little bit of time now to try to figure out how you make this change because there is a change that's coming in. How you do this and how you do this in the right way. Um, there, it could be that there could be some challenges in moving forward. Um, and so you take on this energy of being a student, watching the situation, observing the situation, digging into it, researching it. Um, it doesn't have to be something that creates trauma. It doesn't have to create, tr to create crisis. Um, but it will, um, require you to change some things that you have really focused on in the past. And whoever reap the rewards of that focus will have some adaptation to experience in their own, in their own journey. And so it doesn't have to be crisis. It doesn't have to cause chaos, but it will create some ripple effect in the world around you. And that is just what happens when the wheel turns, right? It leaves a trail, it leaves a track. And so you're going to um, be in the student mode. You're going to maybe feel unsure. You're going to um, maybe Google a bunch of stuff and, and really try to figure out, okay, how do I do this in the best way? Um, it's going to require some sort of delay. So there's going to be a little bit of a slowdown here as you try to figure out how to do this in the best way possible. Um, and there is probably going to be a strategy that you take that in the beginning, see, whenever I experience a hanged man, what I think in the beginning of the delay or of the thinking period is usually somewhat different than when I actually get to the starting point. So there is something here that you're probably going to be digging into and finding out and then applying to your strategy. And that will somehow change your strategy so that you will be able to move forward and, and move forward through this challenge here. Cause, cause usually when we exit, we have to exit at some point. We have to exit before we enter, or we have to exit and enter at the same time. And exiting sometimes is you, you're going to have to, you know, either either there's going to be someone who is going to not like that you change your focus. Their their life or their experience is going to need to adapt, which is probably what why we have this five of wands. You might get some a person saying, but wait, what about this? You said you were going to do this or or what about this project that you have? You know, who's going to take care of that? Well, look, you know, 
things happen for a reason and people just have to adjust sometimes when there's changes and we have to adjust when other people change around us. And that's just part of it. And that's going to create a little bit of challenge for you. But ultimately here, when we have these kinds of energies um, and a wish coming true, there is a requirement that you have for your soul that you live out your human experience in the way that feels best for you, right? If it, when you, when you're at the end of your life and you are thinking back, um, are, wh what are you going to appreciate out of your journey that you helped make life easier for, for a work, for a work partner or for a community member through your nonprofit work? right? Or is it that you were able to accomplish something that you, that fulfilled you to the maximum capacity that brought you into an adventure that was part of your memory that you will take with you as an energy, right? So there is a difference here and there is a right that you have to live out your human experience as you wish it to be not as other people wish it to be. So there is a little bit of claiming of your journey here that's going to happen. Um, I think you're going to do this carefully. I don't see that this is fast. I see the excitement and the exuberance and the love for this um, and, and the adoption of this idea or this strategy comes quickly, but that the movement towards it is going to be done carefully and responsibly. And that's how beautiful of a person you are, Virgo, that you're able to work in this kind of way. That's why you are, you hold the energy of the hermit because you have this intangible, beautiful, compassionate nature of, about you. Okay. Now, I almost don't want to leave this energy, but we do have to move on. I could be reading here forever. Um, so let's put this back and let's make sure these are all in the upright. Put these back in the deck and let's look now. Um, I kind of want to dig into the, uh, what do we want to look at? I, I want to look at what the Empress has to say. What does the Empress have to say? Tell us what the Empress has to say, please. See it all in the upright here. Okay, what does the Empress have to say? What does the Empress have to say, please? Ten of Pentacles. Ace of Wands. Jeez, this is just... King of Wands. I just feel like there's one more. I feel like my voice is saying like there's one more. Four of Pentacles. <laughs> okay. We don't care about that Four of Pentacles. Well, we do because it's here. There's a message there. I don't feel like it's any kind. What I mean to say is it's not something that's that that is a heavy energy that's what i mean to say it's not a heavy energy well here you go i mean the empress has to say um that she is taking action here she's doing something new something that she's excited about um there is a energy around her of abundance of appreciation of her life of feeling this energy of security and safety in the environment around her, whether she is rich or not in a numbers kind of way, she's feeling it energetically. And she's taking action now in a new way, in, a, in an exciting, dramatic way. Here's a king of wands. So there could be a king of wands here. We did have a knight of wands energy. And so there could be a king of wands here who really values, who values this, this energy, this person who's holding on to this person who's saying like, this is a treasure. 
I'm going to hold you close to me. I'm going to hold you close to my heart. Now, if this is you, if you're in a solitary journey, which these journeys of solitary can also be quite beautiful, um, you're in the energy of creation. You're taking on the king, king of wands and stepping forward and, and painting a picture on that blank canvas or constructing something in a place uh, that has been demolished, right? Because the king of wands comes in and he creates, he takes over, he builds, he rescues, he he performs, he presents. He he is a strong creator energy. Um, I don't know where this world would be without the King of Wands and the Queen of Wands, for that matter. Where would the world be without the creators, right? Without the instigators, those troublemakers, right? They can really make profound change in our worlds. King of Wands. So there's a king of wands here, whether this is a person around you or whether it's yourself. Um, now I, I'm going to have to go into the king of wands. I mean, I can't just not go into the king of wands. Let's go into the king of wands and see what we can find here. What is this energy? Nine of cups. I mean, nine of cups. Wish coming true here. Tell me more about the king, king of wands. I just, I, I just don't know. I don't, I don't know. Ten of cups. Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Cups. I mean, this is a this is like the lottery of this is bliss, this is happiness, this is relief, this is togetherness, this is fulfillment. This is whatever makes you the most happy. This experience is bringing that to you, right? We know that the tens don't last forever. We know that we go through cycles, but in this moment. With this empress, empress, she is feeling this kind of um, profound, uh, I don't know, like ecstasy, euphoria. I mean, whatever the word is, it's something that's just delightful. Four of swords. See, now we have two fours. Relief, relaxation, rest, revitalization. I'm going to go into these energies of these two fours merging and see what comes out. Please help me understand what this. So I'm going into this energy right here. It's like I'm zooming into this energy. Eight of Pentacles. You can't look away. It's like you can't look away. It's not, it's like you, it's like it's a magnet for your eyes. It's a magnet for your, for your heart. It's a, it's something that, it's like there's a Pied Piper there is what it is. This is a Pied Piper of your life. Judgment. A great change. Now, is this going to have a bit of a bittersweet energy like judgment does bring? Yes, there will be a bit of a bittersweet here. There's always a balance. There's always something that happens that adds depth to a situation. But it will bring in a great change for you. a great change, a second chance, a cleansing of the past, a cleansing of the soul. Will it sting a little in some ways? Absolutely. Just when we have a wound, does it sting to pour a little bit of clean, whatever? I'm not a doctor. I don't know what you pour on a wound. What is it? I don't know. Alcohol? <laughs> Hydro something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> he cleans it with soap. <laughs> it stings a little bit, but the reward is there, right? That's what I mean to say. You can tell the energy is kind of wearing down now in this reading. But this is an empress who is experiencing something quite exciting, is bringing joy and security and the idea and the feeling of safety 
It's something that's adding drama and magnetism and passion into her experience. And there is an exciting King of Wands here that's connected in with this Ten of, Ten of Cups. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to move to the extended now and, and see how this is going to move into the future. I'm going to look at the people who are around you and, and, and see if I can get more information about them. And then we'll look to see what their perspective is of the Virgo energy of their perspective of you. So I will, we'll do that in the extended. So thank you, uh, my dear friends. It's, it's been a, it's been a, a beautiful experience getting into this energy and um, I wish you all the best. Um, sending love to you and um, wishes for you to stay safe and healthy. And um, I'll see you back on YouTube. And I, I just, I almost hate to leave this energy. I'll see you back on YouTube in um, another week or so with another update for the, for the energy of Virgo. Thank you very much. Bye.